Uh, hey, how's it going? People will start heading in. Donovan, I just made you host, so you can reassign host if you need it or make people do whatever and all that. So give it a few minutes for people to jump in and move around and all that stuff. And I will, I'm going to go start the last session. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. We will start letting people come in. <clears throat> Hello, I was just in the breakout room or the hangout room. They were sending someone over, Nick, to learn more about Edgemax. Okay. Hope oh, there's somebody here who can tell them about it. <laughs> hey, hey, that's why you're here. <laughs> We'll wait a few more minutes and the people file in here as they're leaving the, the main. Thanks, Donovan. Mm -hmm. As you guys are coming in, this is obviously the Bose breakout manufacturer breakout session. And we were very happy to have them earlier for the HEPMA approved showcase, as we have several products from them that are HEPMA approved and several that are in the process of being approved. So, And if you need to know where to get a good haircut like Donovan and I in the tri-state West Virginia area, just <laughs> put your yeah. message in the text. Yeah. I uh, I was I was talking with my my wife. We've been married almost twenty years now, and uh, we came across some pictures of when I was a kid and how much hair I had. And she was like, "I've never seen you with hair." It's like you look like a completely different person. I was like, "Well, this started at about twenty, so yeah, we've." You've never seen me with anything other than this, so she may not have liked you. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. may never would have happened, right? And she did say it was that looks a little weird. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hair's overrated. Anthony, I like your uh, your home uh, workspace. Yeah, thanks. Your ain't, yours ain't too bad either. It's nice. Yeah. Do you have to hide well, any have, guitars? My uh, my keyboard is uh, stacked away because I don't use it that often. But uh, everything else is out, ready to to go. Not hiding any guitars from, from anyone? <laughs> uh, I, there are two more underneath the bed, but I don't, uh, <laughs> this is because I didn't have room for them in here. There's always more somewhere. Yeah, it's a, it's a strange addiction. It's not like keyboards, is it? You know, they're not, not all the same. You're not going to buy 10 of the same keyboard. No, no. Yeah, but I uh, I was I was good for a while, and then my wife and son bought me one for Christmas. So they bought me the 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 orange Gretsch back there for oh, Christmas. Cool. So uh, it's like, well, okay, <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, 
Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get started. People start filtering in. We've got a few people here. I know someone came in specifically looking for Edge Max. So uh, to get started here, uh, this is the Bose manufacturer session. Um, Bose has come on as a uh, partner with HETMA and with the approved program. And we have approved three products with them at the moment. We have um, the VB1 video bar, the HD700 headset, UCC headset, and then the Edge Max speaker system, which just became approved this week. Um, that report will be filed here shortly and, and will be given out to all the parties that, that need it. Um, hopefully by the end of the week, I'm gonna work on it again tonight. Um, but if we're going to dive into what those products are and then dive into what else Bose has to offer and what's what's coming up uh, from them uh, for higher ed. So I'll turn this over to them now. Um, Diane, did you have anything that you wanted to um, to speak to before we get started? No, thank you. OK, and Nick, um, I think um, I got pinged uh, after our last call also with some Edge Max. Um, so I think we we'll probably want to spend the, the most amount of time on that. Uh, but Nick, if we could go through the slides, maybe just do a, a quick review of the um, video bars and then we'll we'll fold into the Edge Max and spend a little more time on that, because I know there's a, a few people on, on the line that would like to, to know more. Sure. <clears throat> Yep, just give me one moment here and I'll pull that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remind me too when you get there because there were a lot of questions about, you know, placement of the Edge Max and dealing with microphone systems. I know you guys have a proprietary kind of this, uh, DSP system that you kind of put in with that some too. So uh, talk a little bit about that when we get there. Yep, sure thing. Um, Anthony, um, were there um, any examples uh, that you wanted to talk about uh, with the Edge Max, some of the stuff that you've done on campus with the visits? Yeah, Georgia Tech has been um, classrooms. Um, they solve some issues with conference rooms. If you have a ceiling mic because of the angle they shoot down at a 75 degree angle, um, they got pretty good game before any type of feedback, you know, it shoots beneath the, the arrays, which is pretty good. That was big. Um, bigger spaces where they just needed one speaker. So if you have the ceiling height, it's gonna give you more coverage. So um, they use them in little atrium type settings, uh, long hallways, um, under balcony fills, if they had real estate under there because there's a driver in there with the eight inch, um, it, it really delivers you know robust sounds. So instead of hanging something that comes beneath, uh, on a balcony, uh, forming arts or lecture hall, they were kind of uh, incorporating edge max in where they could if they had the real estate. And paired with a sub, it's, it's pretty impressive. Again, we've put them outside of EDU in like small jazz clubs, restaurants. I mean, it just it's you have to hear it, it is even distribution of tonality and um, and level for the most part um, without any hot spots anywhere. So do you see it as a, um, I know we're going to jump right in here because I have questions. So do you see it in those kind of settings, you know, replacing, you know, the, the kind of standard front of house, you know, set up where you could set those set in a different spot or, you know, you mentioned replace, you know, putting them underneath other things that are happening and using them separately for yeah, like for like an auditorium size space, you know, we're talking about, you know, a, a slanted lecture hall that, you know, most of us have on campus. We use a MA-12 product. We have a certain array that we use for those primarily, but if there's harder to reach spaces, spaces where there's some type of overhang um, and you need audio as a separate zone there, Edge Max has worked great there uh, in those applications as well. Um, delivering not just audio, but just something robust with the content that needs to be delivered if you're fur further away from, you know, the um, the localized point. But it localizes really well in conference rooms that are a little bit longer. You could put one in the front and you could put one left and right. You can they have uh, tap the settings, you know, separately if you want to use them in 70 volt, which is great, um, or an 8-ohm switch. Um, 
they seem to kind of, you know, it, once you hear it, and we do a lot of visits to campus where we demonstrate this so you could hear it if you haven't. Um, you know, we come, we have some type of apparatus that we do, or we'll send you one in advance and you can mount it. But once you hear it, um, uh, ideas always, well, we could put that here. Oh, if we have the space, we could put that there. You really understand the product and architects kind of like it because it doesn't, um, it, it stays out of their space of where they want to do a lot of aesthetic stuff in conference rooms. That's great. And I think probably what we should do is um, maybe schedule a lunch and learn. That'd be great. Actually set them up and let us hear them and do those kinds of things. So yeah, absolutely, we'd love to do that. Yeah, yeah. Nick, I'll let uh, defer back over to you, and we'll jump into Edge Max again when uh, that comes up. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so uh, we'll just we'll quickly cover like the video bar family, and so um, <clears throat> it is now a family. We have another product. Uh, that's launched. Um, I believe, Rob, correct me, we're working towards certification of VBS. Is that right? I, I think it is, uh, Donovan, isn't it? Uh, the VBS uh, accredited as well with VB1? Uh, the VB1 has been accredited. The VBS has not been. I've, I'm still assembling that report. Okay, but it's yeah. it's eminent, right? Yeah, the VB1 is absolutely approved and the VBS is in... <clears throat> waiting on one report to come back before I can complete that report, but. Great, thank you. Yeah, so uh, VB1 and VBS are both video bar products designed for um, small to medium sized conference rooms or, or huddle spaces. The VBS is more typically seen in, in a smaller space because it is a smaller product and has um, a limited feature set, uh, more designed for those smaller spaces and bring your own meeting. Uh, but both of them feature a, a premium audio experience, a premium video experience, and ease of use. And so uh, I'll just kind of quickly cover the features, and they're kind of summarized on the bottom there. Uh, the voice pickup, the camera, the audio, uh, what it looks like, how it connects, and how you can manage it across a network. Um, so we'll just quickly cover what those, uh, what those are. So there are two products. This is kind of where you'd see them. You'd see them in conference rooms, see them in huddle rooms, see them in any meeting space where you're going to deploy uh, Microsoft Teams or, uh, or Google Meets or, or Zoom like we're doing today. And so it's it's really designed to be a peripheral uh, to those soft codecs and just bring a premium experience to, to those meetings, especially uh, ones where, uh, like you can see here, it's being hosted on the laptop. All right. So... Um, we'll talk about the voice pickup first. So the most important part, obviously, of a meeting is, is the audio. Um, you, you know, if you, don't have, if you don't have video, you can still communicate and you can still talk um, and, and have a meeting. But if, if you don't have good audio, then uh, you're most certainly not going to have a good meeting experience. And so we, we designed the product basically to have best in class audio pickup. And so the way that we do that is to have uh, beam forming uh, microphone arrays in, in, the, in the products. The VB1 uh, being a larger one accommodates six microphone elements. And so um, by, by nature of that alone, it, um, by nature of that, it uh, can, can reach a little bit further, right? So uh, it's good for up to 20 feet. Um, others have used it in larger rooms. Um, uh, with some success, but we spec up to 20 feet uh, for performance. And then the VBS being the smaller product has has four microphones, and so it's good for up to 10 or 11 feet. Uh, and as you can see, it is really designed for those smaller rooms. I think what, uh, what surprised us the most about the VB1 when we evaluated it as a whole was we, we expected it to sound good. Uh, because it's a Bose product, right? We expected the speakers to be great on it and to sound right. But I think what most what what surprised us the most about it was the the microphone array, the pickup on it, and how far away you could be from it and still be, uh, still have it sound like you were you weren't far away from it. It it picked up really really well in line of sight and in a in a hard room that was kind of noisy, in our in 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 our environment. Um, it did exceptionally well in, in a room that was, I felt it was too large for the video bar and it, it performed very well. 
Yeah. Yeah. So there's, you know, we, we've, we've tweaked on the DSP engine that's inside uh, iteratively as since the product was released. And so we've improved on that over time. And um, to your point, a lot of that improvement is, has, has been, you know, keeping the sound that we want in the meeting in it and keeping the sound we don't want in the meeting out of it. And so um, there's a lot of things you can do in software and DSP and, and it, and it, improves every time we we make an, uh, a firmer release and things like that so uh, the good news is it's it's already pretty good and it's going to get better and that's that goes for both products um and so um the way the microphones beam beams work is they basically the microphone works together the microphone elements work together and they and they focus on on the first on the on the, the loudest talker in the room and it puts a beam over them and so it basically uh, has up to four beams that it establishes at any one time. And, um, and then if a fifth person starts to talk, it takes the, the person who talked the longest to go and moves their beam over to the new talker. And so, um, and that works out just fine because if you have more than three people talking at once, nothing productive is gonna happen anyway. So uh, that's, that's not been an issue uh, in terms of the number of beams available. And the same goes for the VBS. Uh, four beams are, are available uh, to, to deploy there. Um, th it's especially useful in a place like this because, um, you know, traditional conference rooms, they have walls and ceilings and things, but open office type deployments are common. And so you'll have a space like this where it's more informal. You get some couches there and coffee table and whatnot. And so people will gather around and have a meeting. Um, but the obvious question is, well, you know, how do you, you know, how, how do you have a meeting if there's all kinds of activity going on and around you? And the answer is simple. We have these cool things called exclusion zones that you can set up in the software where uh, you, you basically tell the video bar, I, I don't want you to focus. If you hear audio over here, I don't want you to, to put a beam there, right? I want, only want you to put a beam where there are people who are participating in this meeting, right? So you can you can establish these in, in software to only uh, pick up where you want the video bar to pick up and then ignore everything else. And what you get is about a, uh, a 25 to 30 dB reduction in, in audio from those exclusion zones. And so they basically uh, go away, right? And they're, you don't hear them on the other side. Now, obviously on the near side, in front of the VB1, on, you know, the people sitting on the couch are going to hear it, but it doesn't take away from the experience on, on the far end. And so that's kind of unique to us, and we think that's pretty cool. You can also do static beams. If you just know there are always going to be butts and seats right there, then you can just put you can put beams right where you want them. And it'll kind of act the same way as exclusion zones. It'll ignore other areas. Okay. So that is the microphone pickup. Uh, playback wise, you know, it, it, it's a sound bar, right? First, it has an audio input on the back of the VB1. And so uh, it has a sound that you expect to hear from Bose as a, as a, as a premier audio company. Uh, racetrack drivers are, were developed for this. And um, so they're kind of long and long and narrow, as you can see there. And the reason to do that is to basically get the, the, the form factor we want and such that that nice shape that we have for for both products the vbs has one racetrack driver while the larger one's got two and so you you know the larger one is capable of stereo playback whereas the, the smaller one will just be mono playback but it's still uh, a really uh, premium experience in both products uh, the cameras uh, were developed by bose for specifically for this product um, it is a 4k camera uh, let's see, I've got the 115 degrees of, of horizontal view on the VB1. And the VBS is uh, a degree wider at 116 on the horizontal. And so that means really you can be about 12 inches from the screen, right? The, the monitor that's going to be mounted uh, beneath or above and still be in the shot, right? So uh, that equates to 123 inch, uh, 123 degree diagonal, which is uh, among the widest, if not the widest, available in a product of this class. Um, so really good camera. Um, and the other cool thing about the camera really is it's, it, the, 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 the digital zoom available. 
uh, has the ability on the VB1 uh, in the larger rooms to pick up two inch text at about 20 feet. So what that means is really you can be on a whiteboard uh, annotating things or making notes and the far end participants are still gonna be able to see that and, and interact and, and, and understand and, and have that be legible and readable to them on the other side um, with the VB1 zoomed in like that. Auto framing is a feature where basically it puts everybody in the same shot. Um, it's it, You can uh, enable it and disable it as needed, uh, but basically it uses the camera, not the microphones, to influence the, uh, the engine in the product to find everybody's face and make sure that everybody is seen at the same time. Something new though that's with VBS is something called, called Follow Me. And what Follow Me does in for smaller rooms, um, if there's basically just one presenter and you get up and you walk around and you're doing, for example, a whiteboard strategy, strategy session, the camera will actually follow the presenter around the room and, and keep them in the shot. So that's, uh, that's exclusive to the VBS. There we go. So moving on to the design element, uh, very sleek. Uh, best bang, the size to performance ratio, probably in this class of product. Uh, both of them are less than two inches tall, less than four inches deep. And the width uh, of uh, 27 inches and 10.5 inches, respectively, uh, to accommodate all the tech that's inside the box. Um, so this basically means that it's uh, ADA compliant um, and uh, has kind of a you know, the rectangular kind of look that's going to uh, match up with most architectural features and, and flat panels that you see on the market today. So nothing protruding on the top or the bottom. Camera's kind of built into the middle of it. So um, it, it has the appearance of a, a of a sound bar without the additional bumps and things you'd see from a camera. Connectivity-wise, on the back of the VBS being the, the smaller of the two products, being geared towards bring your own meeting, this this is a USB uh, only on the back of the of this device, and so it's a USB C that you connect to your laptop, and then you would use that to drive the meeting along with your your power uh, connectivity. On the VBS, that you have expanded connectivity because you can use it in different ways. You still have your USB connection to drive your own meeting, uh, but you also have. Uh, something called uh, display link, be being able uh, to pass the video from your laptop or computer through the VB1 and then loop out into the display. And what that means is you just have a single cable meeting, right? One cable to connect to your laptop uh, is so long as the drivers uh, are installed on your, on your host machine, uh, you can take advantage of that. With the control questions, please ask along the way. I know I'm I'm just kind of doing a flyover here. What what uh, what parameters can you control through the control input? So the control input uh, is really a it's a mute switch. So um, this is for compliance with fire alarm codes and things like that. And so you can set it up either way, whether there there's a whether that is shunted or not. Um, it will it'll mute mute the system to comply with, with codes. And that's really what that is. Yeah. Management wise, there's, there's a few different things you can do. Um, the Bose work configuration software is a, is a, is a one-to-one -one type of thing where you connect to the video bar with USB and you can configure all the settings and, and set it up for use in the room. Uh, Bose work management software uh, is more of a dashboard type environment where it'll go out and see everything on the network. And you can manage uh, groups of VB1s, um, manage firmware updates and things like that. So that's more of the campus approach. Um, both VB1 and VBS uh, have network connectivity with the VB1 having both wired and wireless and the VBS just having the wireless, right? So. You can deploy these, um, add, them, add them to the, the campus network, and then use, use this software uh, suite to, to uh, manage all the devices. Okay. 
Just a couple of quick accessories to talk about. Uh, installation wise, there is a, uh, a visa bracket that basically comes, uh, that sits between the, uh, the flat panel and the flat panel mount. And then the VB1 uh, or VBS can, can hang off the bottom and you can also invert that. It can be on the top as well. And so that's nice. So, you know, when, after installing your flat panel, if it's not quite centered up, you can, you can shift it along uh, the mount rails. Um, based on your mount, you know, if your mount allows that. Uh, and it just prevents you from having to, to get any additional holes in the wall. So kind of an aesthetic thing. Uh, and then the mud ring just allows you to rough it in if you're, if you're uh, in a place where you can plan ahead for, for the installation of the product. Uh, and then the last thing I'll say about it is, you know, we're certified uh, to, with Teams, both devices, uh, Zoom, uh, Google Meet, things like that. And so uh, wireless partners include Bargo and Mersive, right, for wireless presentation. And so uh, we work seamlessly with, with those folks. And then th some of the other uh, brands you see up here, uh, like Avtech, Leon, create uh, accessories that either house or mount the product. And then um, we also uh, work well with uh, folks like HP and Lenovo to with their Microsoft Teams Rooms system. Um, so these, these products uh, integrate uh, well with Microsoft Teams Rooms, um, especially the purpose-built uh, type solutions you see from, from companies like that. So that's pretty much it for VB1. Are there any questions I can answer uh, on that? Or anything else uh, my teammates wanna add? Uh, does anybody want to see the um, the response? I think Ant, you have it set up in your office there, right? You can speak to the um, uh, turn, you know, go farthest down and turn around, see what it sounds like. Yeah. Sure, hold on. Let's, so here I'm going to zoom out just to get an idea of what the room is. So if I turn my back and I'm speaking, you know, and I'm looking down, I'm not committing to the microphone. You know, it does a pretty good job. Um, at, you know intelligibility no matter where the presenter is or how they're committing or not to the microphone so the microphone technology is definitely good um let's see if how, i can do that. how far are you away um my back against the wall right here it's about 14 feet okay. yeah and it, it does a good job at the picking uh picking anyone up as long as you're in the pattern there and um the reverse is true. I'm going to see if I can do the microphone little demo here where I can put the exclusion zone over and see what that does here. Let's see. I got the software up. Okay. So let's see here. I'm going to talk and then hopefully you'll hear it. I'm going to go away. Have some point to see if this is. If I could open it up. Sorry about that. Now, if I could just pull this exclusion zone over. Okay, so you should be hearing reflective sound, but definitely nothing direct. So I'm going to take it away and I'm back. I'm not sure if it changed dramatically or if it dipped at all. It didn't change. Um, can you step out of it when you set it up? Yeah, so let me add. Uh, I've got the exclusion zone up and I'm going to move to my left. Okay, so as I'm talking, I'm just going to go go in this direction and not sure if you're hearing reflective sound or if you're hearing anything kind of dip anymore but I'm literally about an inch away <laughs> not sure what that was like yeah it's not it's not doing what it usually does but yeah there was a, there was definitely a reduction but it wasn't yeah it you know, it cuts it down I mean it's it could be as much as 3 dB sometimes yeah there we go so now, I'm not sure if you're hearing me or if you're not. We're hearing you. Okay. It's... Are you hearing me louder now? Is it back louder? Yeah. Okay. All right. I know that from our standpoint, we have one in a room that is a 20 person conference room at about 25 feet from the display. And they love, they, they really think that it does great. Um, 
I thought that that was not going to be enough in that room. I really thought that we were going to have to add some extra microphone system or some other thing, but they've been really, really pleased with it. So I was impressed with that was kind of at the end of what the parameters say that it should be. And it ended up working very well. Add it to here. Nick, if you want to move on. Yep. Okay, so we'll we'll chat about Edge Max. Um, we we chat a little bit earlier um, about this. So the story of Edge Max kind of starts with um, what normal in ceiling loudspeakers are. Um, traditional in ceiling loudspeakers or have a conical dispersion, as you can see here on the screen. The published coverage angle is typically a little bit wider than what the high frequency coverage angle is, and the reason that's important is because um, a lot of the uh, the intelligibility of uh, consonants and sibilants and things like that happen in high frequency, and so that's a little bit usually typically a little bit narrower than the published coverage angle. Um, and so, what this graphic basically is is telling you is that in order to use uh, conical traditional in ceiling loudspeakers. Effectively, you need to have multiple of them in the room overlapping so that you can have the most coverage or have an even coverage. And so everybody's hearing the same thing. Um, so Edge Max takes a different approach of that and it and in and, and that is an asymmetrical uh, vertical coverage. And it, it mounts around the edge of the room or in the corner of the room or along the wall along the wall. And it has a pattern of 75 degrees asymmetrical that starts straight down underneath the loudspeaker and then works its way up until it gets to that 75 degrees. And so the benefit there is it kind of acts like a surface mounted loudspeaker, but it's flush up in the ceiling. And so you have an aesthetic uh, benefit, but also without sacrificing the performance that you would expect from a surface mounted speaker. And the result is uh, you can use fewer devices in the room. Um, uh, you could, as it says here, fill the room without filling the ceiling, um, and it is a, uh, a premium experience of being a, a two-way device with a with a compression driver and a, and a woofer, right? Um, so that we have two models, uh, a 90-degree model and a 180-degree model, and those those two numbers, 90 and 180, represent the horizontal dispersion. Um, so a 90 would go in a corner and then a, a 180 would go along uh, a wall, for instance, over a display or on a sidewall for a fill. And so what it actually is here um, is, a, is a two way. Two way device with a compression driver feeding what's called a, a phase guide. And an eight inch woofer for the for the low end uh, frequency. So the phase guide is kind of the special sauce. Uh, and really what it is, is uh, a combination of, of what you see there. It's that acoustic, acoustically, acoustically translucent material, that white material uh, behind the, 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 uh, the netting. We call it the, the, the netting, which is that, that honeycomb shaped or spider web looking um, the device that sits on top of it. And by combining those two things, we can give we can give the audio basically a, a directionality and uh, into the room. And the way that the 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 holes are spaced and cut um, closer to the compression driver, the 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 white material is thicker and so sound as I said it's translucent so the sound waves leak basically leak through that that white material at a uh, at a less rate closer to the compression driver than it does further away and so what that means uh, is is the further you're away from the loudspeaker you're getting more energy energy uh, proportionate to the distance that you are so there was a question earlier of like well does it kind of act like a point source loudspeaker where um, it's going to be super loud underneath and then as you get away, is it just going to kind of trail off? We've kind of normalized that over, over the coverage area 
by by using both the the white material and that netting in order to kind of to kind of to spread that spread that energy out. And so it it probably doesn't really sound doable, but this is one of those products you really need to hear in order to kind of understand how it works, um, because the 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 variation in rooms that I've done demonstrations in and done uh, specifications for is at you know two dB right from front from front to back and so it really is quite even and that and the ceiling height does does come into 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 play right so and we'll talk about um, you know where we how we would want to uh, de deploy these here in just a second right um, we see these in we see these loudspeakers deployed in rooms uh, with ceilings as low as nine, um, ceilings as high as, as as twenty feet. I'm sure they've been used in uh, higher ceilings than that. But being being that it does kind of have the properties of a surface mount loudspeaker and the pattern of seventy five degrees, the ceiling height does impact uh, the effective throw of the loudspeaker. So if the ceiling is too low, like below below nine foot, the value of using something like this isn't over traditional end ceilings may not be there, um, but it certainly adds value in the sweet spot of like uh, nine to 14 feet, which is probably where uh, a lot of uh, commercial installations uh, exist, All right? So We've used these in, in background music systems, foreground music systems for retail and restaurant applications. Um, they, they're used as fill speakers for their balconies. Um, and they can be used as uh, in places where you just really can't use a traditional in-ceiling speaker or the use of a traditional in-ceiling speaker would take away from the experience. And so here is, a, here is an, an example where Using a uh, a traditional in ceiling loudspeaker mounted way up high would spread the energy out uh, over this entire area, and you would get some reflections off the windows and off of this these surfaces here, and it would potentially jumble the uh, or take away from the intelligibility of of the listener at at floor level. Whereas uh, using an Edge Max loudspeaker mounted underneath this plane right here. It keeps the sound uh, right where it needs to be, and it doesn't give any energy up over here. Oh. I think we lost Nick. Yeah, I think we lost Nick. He oh. does that every once in a while, especially when he doesn't want to ask questions. Yeah. Or questions <laughs> asked of him, he'll he'll pull the the fake freeze. Are you back, Nick? <laughs> you're oh, muted. you're muted. You're muted. Still muted. Nick, you're muted. Oh, you went away oh. for a minute. Yeah. You're back what's, the last, what's the last thing that you that you heard me say? <laughs> uh, you were pretty much just closing out. I don't think we missed anything. You just froze. Okay. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm not sharing anymore either, am I? No. You're at the lobby up. At the lobby. Okay. All right. So, uh, in more of a conference uh, experience, you would you would typically see this in a room like this where you would have a talking head on the screen and then. Um, if you can see my cursor, it's there's one edge max mounted over the display here. All right. Still not sharing. You need to share. Yeah. Still not sharing. How am I doing, guys? You're doing good. All right. Let's you get four of those. Get four of those. You're down to okay. two. There you go. Okay. So uh the one of the one of the, the really good benefits of Edge Max is that um, when you when you use it in a, in a situation like this where you have a display in the front, and you know for 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 higher ed or the learning environment, if you're doing distance learning, um, 
you're going to have content on a screen or a talking head on a screen. And uh, putting an edge max over the, the display keeps your focus towards that, right? So it, it draws in the participants or the students into the, exper in, into the experience rather than um, having the basically sealing down approach of audio, right? So psychoacoustically, um, it's, it's a more natural experience um, than, than having traditional speakers overhead. Um, same goes for a conference application, and that's that's kind of what this this image uh, depicts. Um, talking head on the screen, and then so it keeps the participants engaged. Um, in most rooms, you can use, and depending on the size of it, again, ceiling height is uh, a factor here. Uh, one size conference room, you would be able to use a single 180 over the screen. Uh, and reach the entire, uh, everybody would be able to be here well in that in that case, right? And so this will typically di displace four to six in-ceiling speakers. Um, so that's less labor, less wire uh, to install. And then you you have the benefit of a, of a higher performance uh, loudspeaker device in this space. Um, now, if we, the room gets bit bigger than that, what you can do is you can d delay a couple of uh, uh, 180 degree models about two thirds of the way back, and that provides the fill you, that the that the rear of the room would need in order to um, not lose any intelligibility. Uh, but the delay uh, keeps them focused towards the front. So we've seen we've seen uh, good success with both both of these um, these applications. And this, and this could be, you know, this could be a classroom as well, um, right? So this is just an example of how you might, you might use this in the field. Um, let's see here. I have some other images. The deployment of these is a single cat five, single cat six ethernet cable, or is it, how are you deploying? Like, what is the deployment of these from that base station? Um, so this is a loudspeaker, so it'll have a loudspeaker cable. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is this connects to an amplifier like any other loudspeaker would. Yeah. You have anything that is any particular amplifiers that you have paired with that tend to work better, or something, or is it? having more to do with the base station than the amplifier itself. I'm not sure I understand what you mean by the base station. Well, it says the, like the, the process, I guess, I guess there's really no processor system with this, correct? There's just, there's just the speakers themselves. Well, yeah, the loudspeaker, the loudspeaker by itself uh, can be driven really by, by any amplifier. We do have amplifiers that are, that go along with this, with a team certified package. Um, and so uh, that would be these amplifiers. Uh, power space amplifiers are um, when paired with EdgeMax uh, and, and one of our DSPs is a team certified solution. Um, so we have several models we can attach to this. Um, we, also, uh, we also have amplifiers that have DSP on board. And so the benefit of that is uh, you can load a Bose factory EQ settings that um, that make the loudspeaker the best possible experience out of box. Um, that's, I think that's what I was trying to get at is yeah. that, auto, that already paired auto-tuned system yeah. that, that is already there. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I think it's fair to, to say too, I mean, there, there's a lot of great amplifiers that are made and there's a lot of crap amplifiers that are made. Um, and unfortunately, um, you know, if it's just a, a standard ceiling speaker application, um, a lot of times price comes into that, which means, you know, you're buying a lesser, lesser valued amplifier. And it, this product wants good power, right? It wants clean power. It wants, so the better the amplifier you put, the better the sound. So I think it really comes down to what, what's your level of expectation on 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 the performance and the experience of the room. I think for us, when we talk about it being an approved product, we we need to maybe talk about, you know, hey, 
<clears throat> all this is also an option you can have. We love the speaker by itself, but yep. there is a paired amplifier system that you can buy with this saying, you bet. this yep. auto yep. tune for this product. This is something that if you're going the going the distance to buy the edge max, you should also buy this as well. Yeah, that's a great way to think about it. But there's nothing really proprietary though. Right. So. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You can these will these will work with any amplifier, but the more power that you give them, the, the better they will perform. Perfect. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can I answer any other questions about Edge Max? Or anything else that I anybody wants to know about them? I know when we initially asked about surface mount, um, this was way back when we first started talking to you about them. Um, they don't really lend themselves to surface mount, correct? They're, they're, they need to be recess mounted, whether it's in a ceiling or in a, a, a const early construction phase, correct? Uh, yes, this is a flush mount product. Um, so it's designed to go up in a ceiling, yep. We, we have had some folks play with um, open ceiling. Um, yeah. I don't know how much of that you get involved with, but. Um, I think for happy. us, our, any of the new construction stuff, it's great, but retrofitting some of our spaces because they're hard ceilings or they're we're in older buildings that have asbestos and those kind of things that we kind of lend ourselves in those spaces to kind of not mess with that and go with surface mount. But for a new construction side, I could definitely see this being uh, the way to go for those things. Um, once they do the, the mitigation and they put in the drop ceilings where they haven't put in those before, but uh, I definitely see the use case for, for the new construction or the renovation side of, of what we do. And I think Ant mentioned it earlier, it, you know, it's just one of those products that it's, you know, we, we show it and we really work hard to get away from, hey, this is a ceiling speaker. Uh, it's very different. Nobody else makes anything like this. Um, and you really need to hear it in the space, you know, and, and we've come up with some unique ways to demonstrate it. But we're, we, we know it's a high touch type of demonstration. I mean, once you hear it, once you see it, you get it. Um, and we would be, you know, we would make I'd make the offer to everybody on the call. If if you wanted to see this, we have the ability to get it out in front of, you know, lots of different um, demonstrations. So if you wanted to have us come and, and do a demonstration of it, we would be happy to do that. Um, yeah. And we've done that in certain segments of HEPMA um, currently. But um, again, it's just it's just one of those things that, you know, I mean, we have working for a speaker company, it's always about the demo and, and it's fun because you get to sit around and, you know, demo speakers all day and that's, that can be fun. But uh, this, this is a product that is really unique. Um, it's highly reliable and it sounds fantastic. Um, so depending on your application, um, it, it really deserves a listen. And also for those members uh, who are HEPMA members on the call, um, this is now an approved product and we will be releasing that report. Also, we'll be releasing the names of the, of the people on our inside channels, uh, releasing the people who were uh, a part of that evaluation and you can ask questions directly to them. If you're interested in this product, you can reach out to those people directly and ask about the approval process and ask about their use cases for that. So we'll be doing all of that. Uh, um, I'm really hoping to have it ready for the end of this week. So uh, if you have any other questions like that, you can reach out to me directly and I can point you directly to the people that you can you can talk to about them. And I well, think and we've got a demo coming up over at Rutgers, right? With Tim um, yeah. in the next several weeks, he expressed interest, yeah. We got it done at Miami University coming up, um, but yeah, it's uh, once you hear this, it's the Colorado University that went really well. I know they put them into rooms already. Emory University replaced, or what was going to be over fifty regular uh, flush mount speakers. I think they used twenty two Edge Max, and they have uh, it's just it's robust, you know, um, multifunction three. 
the visible auditor uh, rooms that turn into an auditorium. Well, I know Joe was pretty impressed with them too, and he's he's talked many nights about them. So, I, yeah, we uh, have several projects on his campus right now that yeah. we're working on. Because well, I really appreciate it. I know we've got a uh, um, happy hour coming up, and uh, maybe some some special. You guys are sponsoring that, and a special right. performance by by Mr. Anthony there. So, uh, I'm gonna jam out. All right. You're you're going to find out that he was not born to to be a speaker <laughs> salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward very much to it, and I look forward to continuing our our partnership together at Hatma and 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 everything that we've got coming up. So. Likewise. Thank you, Donovan. Thanks a lot, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Thanks. All right, guys, uh, I'll release you back into the main. You want to go back into the main uh, site and go back to the networking site again for uh, our uh, our happy hour. Okay. Okay. And that, sh that should work good for you then. You should be able to slide right in. All right. That's a different launch, right? Okay. Yeah, but just don't hang up. Mm -hmm. There should be, what are they actually calling it? I'm not, sessions, it's under. I think it might be the hangout room, Donovan. Yeah, I think it's just going back into the hangout room is where they're doing the yeah. uh, the happy hour. All right, so we should, we should just log off. Even do it, okay.